एज कॉन्सेप्ट आर्टिस्ट आर जॉब इज टू लाइक क्रिएट अ प्रिव्यू पिक्चर ऑफ यू नो वॉट कैन बी द विजन ऑफ दिस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ दिस गेम ऑफ दिस मूवी डू यू थिंक लाइक ड्रॉइंग इज एन एसेंशियल पार्ट ऑफ बींग कॉन्सेप्ट आर्टिस्ट सो आई थिंक ड्रॉइंग इज बेसिकली द फाउंडेशन और द फर्स्ट स्टेप दैट यू टेक नाउ इफ दिस स्टेप इज वीक देन एवरीथिंग दैट यू डू is also you know going to fall flat right. i got a chance to meet uh, my one of my idols carla ortiz and she's just amazing and yeah and just then you know uh, i got a chance to you know share my uh, portfolio with her and i remember like she she's going through my portfolio and then she just says one thing and she was like uh, you know you are a very good liar and i am like taken aback oh my god <laughs> Hello friends and welcome to Art with Gorav. Joining us today is Anirudh Singh, a rising star in the Indian gaming industry. Anirudh is a concept artist who effortlessly fuses cultural influences with cutting-edge creativity, shaping the visual landscapes of future games with his unique artistic flair. We'll begin with a quick glimpse of his work and meet him on the other side of this showreel. Oh, that was hey, some God. insane work. Hey, Anirudh, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Ah, uh, great to have you, man. And uh, I was looking forward to this conversation since a long time, and it's good that we yeah. are finally uh, here. Yeah. So finally. let's. It took some time, but we're there. <laughs> that's that's amazing. So let's just dive right into yeah. it. And uh, since you have been working as a concept artist for quite some time, and there are some big names in your portfolio let's just try to yeah. uh, dive into the actual uh, role that you play like can you just you know describe what does a concept artist do yeah so as a concept artist i'm mostly working on the pre production stage of uh, be it video games or uh animated movies or anything the i come at the pre production stage so my job is basically i am tasked with designing the environments the characters uh weapons props vehicles so everything that goes into production has to be designed first because that is also a very you know time saving effort because if you pick up something and you spend uh, like a year designing it or mm. uh, like uh, making it production wise and if it doesn't work then you lose so much of time and money and effort so as concept artists our job is to like create a preview picture of you know what can be the vision of this product of this game of this movie so then uh, like we start with uh, you know the tasks that are given to us like its characters we design the characters try to give them a sense of how the final product is going to look now at this stage it becomes very easy to do changes also right so then there are multiple designs iterations that we try out uh, different you know mixing and matching other stuff and trying trying to come up with a design that works uh, visually as well is what's feasible production wise so once that is done then it enters the production stage so now everything is locked mm -hmm. people who are tasked with the production they don't end up you know wasting time because now they have like a set direction so that's why concept art also becomes like a very important part of the whole development process of a video game or a movie absolutely absolutely so do you think yeah. like uh, drawing is an essential part of being a concept artist or you can uh use other tools or other skill sets also like how does it work so so i think drawing is basically the foundation or the first step that you take 
Now, if this step is weak, then everything that you do is also, you know, going to fall flat. Right, right. So the better you are at sketching, the better everything is going to be, even when you're designing mm. or you're painting. And this is something that I have also struggled with. And it took me some time to realize, uh, like, I'll just uh, give you an example. So few years back, I visited this event in Malta called uh, Torjan Horse is a, was yes, a unicorn. Yes. THU. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a big, you know, big yeah. event and artists from all around the world gather to, you know, just, uh, you know, connect mm -hmm. and share ideas. And it's it's the festival is just amazing. So there I got a chance to meet uh, my one of my idols, Carla Ortiz, and mm -hmm. she's just amazing. And yeah, and just then, you know, uh, I got a chance to, you know, share my uh, portfolio with her. And I remember like she's she's going through my portfolio. And then she just says one thing and she was like, uh, you know, you are a very good liar. And I am like taken mm -hmm. aback. Oh my God. <laughs> so she said, uh, you lie to yourself a lot. Okay. Then I'm like, oh my God, what have I done? So then she, you know, she says that, uh, you lie that you think that you can, you know, you lie to yourself that you can sketch well, but you can't, you paint well, but you can't sketch well. Mm -hmm. So if the problem with your portfolio of work is as soon as you start improving your sketching, everything that you're struggling with will also improve. Right. So then she showed her sketchbook, you know, she had this tiny, small sketchbook and inside it, she, she was just, you know, scribbling or just drawing people. If she's at the bar, she's just sketching people. So that is something that habit I also try to pick up. And even if I'm, you know, working, I'm just constantly, you know, trying to sketch because that actually adds another level to your work. So I think sketching is the foundation and it is something that is very important. And even though we have 3D and all these other tools that are disposable, the quickest way to share an idea is still a sketch. Absolutely. So when I'm, you know, we're in a meeting or we're discussing idea, it's like, just do a quick sketch. And everyone understands a sketch, you know, you don't have to spend hours rendering it. And that is also a very important part of concept art that people don't understand. It's like what we do is mostly a lot of rough, dirty sketches. Mm. We're just exchanging ideas. It's never about, you know, painting the most prettiest picture right. or you know, rendering small details. It's always about the idea. And the better you sketch, the more clear you can, you know, share your or put your idea across the room. So it is actually the foundation and the very important step of, you know, uh, concept art. So yeah, sketching yeah, yeah. So is, you, you is important. You put that really well. And uh, uh, if a person can visualize or, you know, put yes. a quick idea in front of the uh, client or uh, the team lead, whatever, yeah. I think it's better uh, rather than, you know, uh, speaking about it and trying to describe every detail, you know, how the yes, background exactly. is going to be and what the character is doing. Yeah, so yeah. If you're able to quickly sketch it out, I think it conveys the most yeah. of it. Right. And yeah, exactly. One more point that I think is very important that you just shared and uh, uh, artists should realize that concept art is not about finished pieces necessarily exactly right? it, it, yes. is, it is a concept in itself it might be further developed in 3d or uh, into some final production painting or uh, an illustration yeah. right so that before that you need a strong concept first exactly exactly yeah, so that is also what i see in you know beginners who want to be concept artists it's like they are more inspired or they think concept art is what you see online or in the art books, even in art books. It's like it's people get confused between marketing art and actual concept yeah. art. So marketing art is what is released afterwards. And, you know, as an artist, you once that dirty idea is approved, mm -hmm. then you can spend, you know, a week or two just refining it. And what we see is that refined version. So in a lot of portfolios, uh, 
a lot of kids they struggle with you know spending a lot of time in making things pretty and rendering it and you know making it exactly you know like photorealistic mm-hmm. but you don't need that you know yeah. so that is the misconception that i also you know help people with you know breaking that you know it's not about just rendering and spending mm-hmm. hours getting uh, it's it's more about you know design yeah. and you know how good your visual library and visual skills are या एंड सबसे बड़ा डिलेमा ये होता है कि व्हेन इज द पीस फिनिश्ड लाइक यस एग्जैक्टली कैन जस्ट वो चलते ही जाते हैं यू कैन कीप ऑन यू नो स्पेंडिंग डेज या तो उसको एंड एंड मोस्टली ये होता है लाइक इवन आई गेट टू हियर लॉट्स ऑफ क्वेश्चंस रिगार्डिंग हाउ टू मेक इट मोर रियलिस्टिक अब वो रियलिस्टिक में तो आप कितना भी टाइम स्पेंड कर लो एंड आई थिंक इट्स मोस्टली अबाउट द टाइम दैट यू स्पेंड anyone can yeah, yeah, pretty much yeah. do a realistic rendering if they spend mm-hmm. good amount of time right but to yeah. have a sense of design have a sense of visualization yeah. i think that is more important right exactly exactly and like that's what like now it's when you uh keep doing this for a long time then you re- realize realism is actually very easy because if you get the forms right and if you get like proportions and everything it is realism you know you don't need to yeah. spend as you know rendering it it's like it 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 will look realistic so yeah actually yeah and and there is a uh, there is a lot of uh, abstraction in realism as well i guess the way we perceive exactly. things exactly. and yeah. the way we present yeah. them in our uh, artworks so nothing yes. can be yes. actually called Uh, you know realistic or very uh, absolutely real right yeah yeah okay exactly. so that that's that was a wonderful insight and uh, go, great yeah. to know that you <clears throat> got to meet uh, carla ortiz uh, at the yeah 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 it was uh, like uh, that festival actually like changed me a lot because i was uh, very demotivated very demotivated because and it is bound to happen because there is so much talent like when you browse through sketchbooks mm-hmm. you are like instantly demotivated like what a, where am i you know what am i doing with life but then also it fuels you up with so much inspiration and so much you know especially the talks that you get to hear the struggles that you see other people go through and finally achieving that success and you know their journeys it's it's amazing and you uh, it's like this is something that i would recommend any every artist it's like you know save up do whatever you want but once in life just attend uh, these conventions and you know it's it's and absolutely which, worth which it which one did you attend like in which year i think i uh, it's it was 2018 18. okay okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, since i got to know about the event like uh, for a yeah. uh, few years i kept on you know uh, thinking about going there and i thought i, I yeah. would be able to save it you know for the next time maybe yeah. but uh, yeah. didn't get yeah. to go so yeah i yeah. Uh, i almost like i watched the the documentaries that they have posted mm-hmm. and they've covered yes. various artists that they were uh, that were there and uh, yeah. usme bhi like to look at their sketches and to yes, look at how they draw is absolutely like uh, you know overwhelming because uh, yeah, and, yeah. and being in that space with them must have been yeah uh, exactly you know, yeah and because it. you know the, yeah these artists they are very busy you know and if you uh, you know dm them your portfolios mm-hmm. it's like very little chance that they'll reply or have time to you know give you proper feedback but when it comes to our festival they are there yeah. for this reason that's like an so and uh, it's feedback. not about, yeah yeah mm-hmm. exactly and it's like you get to socialize the, uh, with them in on a you know not it's like a very casual kind of yeah. uh, way it's not like very professional it's like you know everyone's having a good time they're talking and you know a bunch of people you're mm-hmm. discussing art so you also form a some sort of you know a connection a right, bond right. with them so and, and it goes for, away right yes, exactly and meeting other artists that are of your level you know just normal friend they become your very good friends and that's how you network that's how you get freelance gigs or you know you step into industry because 
this is actually very important as well absolutely because networking if you're a freelancer or if you want to get projects outside of india it's like very important that you know people or who can you know put in a good word for you so it becomes really really easy once you have that okay great right so um, thinking about uh, uh, i was just wondering what what uh, can we jump into next and that brings me to uh, the question of uh, you know the use of ai nowadays since you mentioned carla yeah. ortiz and she's being really working yeah she's the savior she's the savior she's the she's working really really hard to yeah. you know fight for the artists rights yeah. and uh, yeah. what what are your thoughts on ai like do you think we can use it effectively and especially for the newcomers like the artists who are yeah. just trying to enter the, into the field or who are just starting with their education mm-hmm. what should yeah. their take be when it comes mm-hmm. to ai yeah so like do, i don't want anyone to take my word bit by bit for it because i might also be wrong when it comes to this but when it my thoughts on ai generally is that right now it is not at all ethical mm. and i completely you know i am in support of artists whose work or that database that it has been trained on it's actually leeching of them and that is wrong you know it's like you know you can see now it's like there are points that you can now actually see the resemblance in ai whose you know what work this ai artwork was created taking reference from or you know you can see uh craig mullins work right, or something right. like in that mm-hmm. you know ai you can you can if you see if you've seen the work you can see you know the source of it coming so i'm absolutely against it and now this can be you know maybe eventually it's like it can be done in a legal way where artists are invited to share their artwork or put their artwork in the database and every time an artwork is generated they get some sort of royalties or that but then i think it's crazy because then these companies would go completely bankrupt mm-hmm. and it would defeat the the purpose of it but i think using ai right now it's like i think a lot of big lawsuits are still you know they they will find themselves trapped in lawsuits mm-hmm. especially mid journey and with things how things are going i think uh i forgot recently uh, i'm sorry uh, yeah uh, paul Re- uh, reed reed sadan yeah yeah so he basically uh, he uh, entered some keywords where he actually got the exact screenshot from the avengers movie oh. he just uh, wrote you know thanos this this and it was it actually just replicated the whole screenshot oh. uh, or screen crap or you know so it's like Insane. it's actually you know you know taking away it's like a copyright uh, cha- they will face copyright charges mm-hmm. now when it comes to use of this for artists as a tool i think it can be a good tool if you know if artists are able to make their own databases or train their own ai models so that might be very uh, helpful and some artists are also using that and it completely makes sense for them to use it mm-hmm. so but i would still want this to be done you know ethically because the way i i see it is like okay the way how ai works okay we take reference images or you know i have i ins- i am inspired by carla's work mm-hmm. but i would never you know take what carla drew and drew draw over her work i would never do that i would never take the, her work as a base and you know just try to you know rip her mm-hmm. off it's like okay i would study her work okay the her choice of colors or how she you know makes a stroke i would try to replicate that but i would never you know in my artwork just copy the face she, like go to photoshop just you know crop out the face that you use and just bash it in my work i would never do mm-hmm. that no artist does that and if i was to do that my work would just instantly you know go up so many levels but that's where we draw the line right. so it's like ai i feel it's still you know stealing it's just 
what i personally use ai is solely for inspirational purposes so it's like i if i am stuck with something if i want if i'm experimenting with a design idea okay i'll see what mid journey comes up mm-hmm. with i'll see a bunch of options and then i would use that as a base to you know start my right, own right. ideas just to make maybe make a mood board out mm-hmm. of it so now i get the choice of colors i get a nice composition maybe maybe these shapes from these four images that i generated maybe i can mix these and make a new image or something that is completely my mm-hmm. own i'm not stealing like how would i go to pinterest instead of going that maybe what i do right now it's maybe i generate my own reference images mm-hmm. right but i'm not you know just printing it or using it those directly in my work or using that to get my work i think that that is wrong and i think when the creators they wanted to make this tool they made it for artists so that they can you know the tedious task mm-hmm. those can be done a lot quicker and if something is made that makes the tedious task uh, uh you know quicker then i think i'm all up for what the future holds for these ai mm-hmm. tools but it is actually very disheartening to see you know a lot of people a lot of bands and uh, all these uh, writers resorting to ai art for the covers mm-hmm. and you know it just for me it's like it feels cheap absolutely <laughs> and i think soon people will realize that this is low quality art actually it 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 challenges the definition of art itself like yeah exactly it's totally and it means the uh, process and the involvement the human involvement behind it yeah yeah and it makes me you know a uh, question that art if i look at mm-hmm. art has been something that has been exploited across ages mm-hmm. you know it's like everyone wants art in their life you know but no one wants to struggle or pay for it right right just they just keep finding ways to you know procure it but they never value it right. and yet it is the most important thing that they need in their life and only a few people like us who are so passionate about it they want to just they are obsessed with it and it is actually very disrespectful to them that you are resorting to these sort of means and you know exploiting art it it happened with music I, you know when the piracy and mm-hmm. this happened it just you know okay people say that uh, now because everything was on internet so many musicians they their reach grew mm-hmm. but then also their sales drop it you know earlier a uh, normal band would put out records and they would you know sustain themselves now that angle dropped and same i think it's going to happen with art because with artists a lot of you know being affected by this so we need to maybe you know fight this out uh, and not let what happened to the music industry when the piracy and mp3s and all these uh, got and destroyed that industry i think it's about time we should you know learn from that right. and try to safeguard what we have with art yeah i guess uh, the only way to go about it is you know just be hopeful right that things yeah. will yeah. take a, a good direction and simultaneously yeah. and we can see. maybe just you know get a hang of the tools that are coming up if they are you know yeah. and if if we have to you know have to use these tools if this becomes the new norm then okay we'll have to you know it's like the saying you need to learn how to make chicken salad out of chicken shit, mm-hmm. shit. so it's like you would need uh, these tools and if you have to learn it then the thing is at as an artist what sells you or what is the most important thing is what you create so the only good side that i see about ai is like artists becoming creators and artists making their own ips faster yes. they're not relied on you know studios artists can become you know graduate to being filmmakers right. or comic book artists or producing their own stuff more on ips mm. because that is what i am more most excited about it's like okay maybe i'll be able to generate my own movie 
with these tools maybe i'll if i have a graphic novel in mind i'll be able to create that graphic novel faster right. with these tools and that is how each and every artist should be thinking it's like now it's it's about time that you to safeguard yourself from these ai tools you need to find your own voice mm. your own identity mm. you know we've been hiding with uh, you know these commercial projects or working for people and working for you know different studios but now it's time to find that artistic voice that earlier artists used to have because each and every artist was different they had that unique taste we were not they were not copies of mm. you know different artists so it's if we want to safeguard ourselves from the ai it's about time that we start telling our stories our creations are you know coming up with our own art, art style finding our own right. voice i think that is going to be the way forward for if you want to you know survive right and still in still this, uh, yeah. being innovative using whatever tools yes, that exactly. we can exactly. yes one thing that i absolutely agree and it actually makes sense was that there's a comparison when a uh, camera was first introduced mm. people thought that was the end of painting right, right no one would you know buy paintings because now you can just Take hang photograph and yeah. photograph yeah 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 but then it actually ended up leveling up artists because now they had a fixed reference that they could work with yes so the quality of artists their work also increased mm. so with ai now you know with that ai i'm sure our quality will also increase because if we use these tools to our advantage like how you know getting more uh, reference images or you know making better mood boards mm -hmm. or finding new ideas that maybe your head can't think but yeah this what this program generated i can use it for my own advantage yeah. and you know maybe streamline your effect. own process in a better way and become yes, more exactly. quicker yeah. at it rather than yeah. just getting it all automated you know, yeah i think yeah. that's yeah. that's the way that's, to go that's, yeah okay so uh, how was working on uh, raji the epic like uh, Uh, this game has yeah. has been around in the news for quite some time i think yeah. it was released in uh, 2020 the later half of yeah 2020. yeah i think 19 and 19 was i think for nintendo switch yeah. and then initially it was for nintendo switch right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it it has uh, really gained a lot of appreciation across the media and uh, yeah how was working for the game for you like uh, how did you you know land up with uh, nodding heads at the first place yeah. and tell us about a uh, little bit about your uh, initial journey and how how did you you know get into the yeah. games at first yeah so the thing is like and we just celebrated 7 uh, years of nodding head games oh, so we were just like you know just time just flew by and you know it's just 7 years already great so, great yeah so it, it it is like something that i've always dreamt of and all my dreams like these dreams that i had were fulfilled because of you know nodding head games and these awesome people that i get to work with these are like you know family now mm -hmm. so the thing was uh uh so i started how i got into video games and you know uh, concept art so i as long as i can remember i was obsessed with cartoons and you know cartoon network basically i saw cartoon network and my mind was blown and then on discovery uh, that's when cable tv was also started you know coming and th on discovery there was a show called splat so mm. this show showed uh, the process of uh, uh these cartoons being made okay. that's when that was the first time when i heard the uh, the name animator mm. so and there were interviews and my mind was blown that okay like this is actual job you know no one is doing this for hobby these cartoons they making money they can you know mm. you know earn a living doing mm. this so that's when i just word just got stuck in my animator okay and if anyone used to ask me like class teachers bade okay kya banna chahta i was like animate and no one had a clue ki what animation was mm. and things were very different back then so but the thing was like i always enjoyed creating stuff so even in my notebook i was like creating original characters now that i look back it was not i was not copying stuff mm. i was all 
always you know creating new ideas right, yes. or new variations or i was like opposite to x men so i was creating my own new x men mm-hmm. you know what powers or abilities that they would have it was not you know i am not drawing wolverine mm-hmm. all the time it was like you know wolverine this or this version of wolverine or that version so eventually like after 12th uh, i found like arena animation and all mm-hmm. these studios and that actually like demotivated me because they were teaching me what i wanted to learn mm-hmm. it was a very you know uh, dark side of that those years where i was like well especially my parents because no one was you know aware of this industry or how mm-hmm. things work or what's the you know uh, way to go around this so then they were like then it was like i went to delhi to animaster and things like but i was not you know it was always about copying stuff that already existed it was never how do you build or create your own yes. stuff it was never working on the foundations because i never took fine art and that is also like one of my biggest regret that had i known mm. that you know uh, fi- how a uh, in- crucial role fine art plays into all this mm. then maybe i would have taken fine art in my college or in you know mm. school basically so uh, then i was like okay nothing doing i'll just you know teach myself mm. so that was the time where i used to you know go to youtube and maybe torrent these dvds like earlier artists used yes. to come out with dvds instant mm. dvds mm. yeah yeah so i used to you know learn and then i found out about fzd okay uh, singapore thanks thanks of design yeah. and singapore mm-hmm. yeah 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 but that was like very expensive, very expensive yeah. and for uh, yeah, yeah yeah so my dad he just laid out uh, some rules he said okay you try for nid first and if you get into nid then i'll send you to fzd okay. because that way you're like safeguarding your future we not you That's know your like and i get it you know. yeah 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 so like if you that maybe you you get graduated and you know you have a degree and then maybe you can take this risk and I'll, I'll you know I'll work something okay. out I'll send you that so i clear the entrance exam for nid and i go to the interview room and i go there as if i'm entering a rodies interview oh. i was like you know i'll be all honest you know i'll be me and that was a different me yeah, back then kuch bhi kar do kuch bhi kar dunga right <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I told them to clean it. They were like, "Why do you want to join NID?" I was like, "You know, my father. I want to go to FZD, and that's what my father said on their face. I said this, and they were like, 'You just want to use us?'" I was like, "Yes. So, please, you know." But the amazing, I, I absolutely failed the interview. Like out of sixty, I got fourteen marks or something like that. Like I was pathetic. So the thing was, but that thing actually changed a lot on me. Mm. So the thing was, when they saw my portfolio, the only thing that they said, like the the important thing that they said, was, okay, you have the skill, you can, you know, do this very good. But what is you in this work? Like what you are creating is European fantasy, and you know, like very west. Where is your? Where do you come from? Mm. You want to see that in your. in your work you know it's okay like everyone in the west is doing right. it but you are from india what is your identity what is of anirudh that you are putting in your art work and that made me question each and everything that yes why am i chase, chasing you know what i am not born there i am hmm. born here you know in india so i need to take inspiration from where i come from so then another friend so i didn't go get into nid but a friend of mine i made a friend there he was applying for dsk ruby uh, soup and fork okay game. pune that that so, was in pune right pune, yeah yeah dsk mm-hmm. so uh, then i applied for that and i luckily got into the fourth year okay straight away because okay. i had like uh, i was i already did my graduation bcom okay. but because of that and the skill level i uh, i got in directly in the fourth oh, year of game art mm-hmm. yeah and the best thing was that i entered there at the right time because i think that time it was at the peak mm-hmm. and uh, you know all the faculty from all around the world and the students everyone was there at during the time that uh, when i entered okay 
so like faculty that had work on triple a games mm. and people from majority of them were from france mm. and that is also uh, so now that was like completely different and they wanted global things mm. and i so in the fourth year you had to present like a final project that is your universe and if that gets selected mm. you in the fifth year you form studios and you have to develop like a game prototype okay. so yeah yeah so my fourth year project was because that time taking from the nid experience i was all indian mm. and i created like an indian universe a game called uh, yuganth gotcha. and it was about mm. archery and things like that mm. so now i got selected for the final year but all the <laughs> faculty that was at outside they were like this won't work get it you have to do it mm-hmm. so now again it was like a big dilemma like what do you do so during this time two people were there to support me ian and shruti okay so they were the 3d and uh, like the trainers my trainers they are mm-hmm. trainers so mm-hmm. they really supported me because they stood by to this vision that i had of creating games for india mm-hmm. and you know bringing that you know element into video games and you know focusing on that so once i graduated these people they also you know left tsk mm-hmm. and they wanted to start their own studio nodding heads okay so then they were like okay they were ga- building a team everyone you know just shared the vision mm-hmm. so they asked me okay do you want to do concept and we have this vision we like we share this vision of creating games for india so uh, you know uh, do the concept art for this and that's how i joined them as a concept artist initially and then raji like shruti and these guys had a vision of raji mm. and they were already working on it so i came in i started did some concepts and that's how we started working and then there was a like the whole game putting mm. out the whole game was a big struggle but we you know did like shruti uh, sold a flat just to keep the team afloat there was this time also till that was before we got the funding mm-hmm. so it was like a whole thing it's like surreal and mm-hmm. uh, you know we just did it so. but i think it, so, yeah, it so all it, was, it all paid well at the end like it, it yeah, yeah 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 has yeah. received a uh, you know a lot of appreciation I, yeah that's what and mm-hmm. the thing was like now when i look back that why did it work i think each and every one like the team everyone want was so motivated and dedicated to it like the amount of art that everyone was doing and putting in the studio like lack was because the, we had something to prove mm. because we had to create there was no other way out so it happened only because each and every one was equally dedicated and equally wanted to do this that's how this became successful because you know everyone was just so motivated and it was like inspiring to see that so you automatically did your best you like this person is doing so much he's putting extras okay no maybe i'll also you know contribute and i'll also right, do some right. more work it you know try so to was it just the seven of you like uh, how big was the team yeah i think uh, the core team was like i, I think seven and then uh, f- uh, other people from like uh, they were uh, like yeah as he was the animator i think around 11 okay. to 12 people okay. linus uh, the uh, the guy who did the music mm. he was from greece mm. so and the animator he was from australia there was uh, another uh, david he uh, a character artist he was from calcutta mm. so few freelancers but uh, yeah but that was the size yeah, of it i think uh, that's the way to do it actually like we should have yeah. more of such indie studios and more of such projects exactly. because uh, so far we've been doing some outsourced work like the original concept is from somewhere else mm. we are grill- yeah. grilling yeah. into it and yeah. just you know our yeah. skill and our uh, uh, maybe understanding of certain things is all mm-hmm. contributed yeah. for their ips exactly exactly we, with, and, because and, we have so many so much uh, content in our culture and yes, our land that we can actually generate original ideas and use or let's yeah. say collaborate with uh, other uh, artists or other skill sets and get them to work on it 
yeah yeah exactly and like that's what we have so much it's like we're just we haven't even scratched the surface yes mm. yet so the thing is like we are majority of the studios i get their point of view that they eventually everyone wants to make money and they are making money so they focus on things that everyone knows it's like mahabharat or ramayan but things go way beyond this if you just start reading the text the, the stories and the things are insane like they would put star wars or mm. these big franchises to shame Absolutely, if we just yeah. start reading what history we have what stories that are already there mm-hmm. like you can just mix and match those stories and you can create amazing worlds amazing stories amazing ideas just you you need to know that this stuff is also very cool and you should not just stay focused on what you know just oh, here yeah. it's like what is below that is the real juice so people need to dig deeper and with that also it's like okay mythology will get you here mm. but once you start digging into culture right. that's when you'll start finding design yes. and ideas because we have so many different kinds of cultures their nitty gritty things that they do their stories where they came from it's just like it will fill you up with so many inspiration you like in this life you won't run out of ideas to mm. you know do something because we are actually blessed with so many things uh, you know so yeah so, uh, was it like uh, any kind of struggle working on uh, you know such a theme which which might uh, yeah. did, did it um, attract some kind of backlash or you know any sort of uh, sentiments yeah. hurting the sentiments of people i don't think there was anything no like yeah, yeah, yeah we we tried to be like very careful of you know what we put and it was like the thing was our goal was to represent our culture you know to the audience uh, around the world so we wanted the best possible portrayal of our culture so we tried to you know research well and tell the best story that showcases our stuff the best in the best possible way and like we just showed a little side of it there's so ma- many things that could have been done and that will be done mm-hmm. it's just that we try to you know make sure that uh, and it's like when you are an indian that is you know working on this then you know the things that which can go wrong mm. okay if i am making like a sign and maybe raji is walking on the floor where the sign is mm. or even if it's a rangoli that has some sort of religious symbol i know this can cause trouble i know this is disrespectful so i'll automatically sway away from you know mm-hmm. that mm. okay things might look cooler if i you know visually it might appear you know badass if i do this if i you know take some liber- uh, liberties mm-hmm. with these gods or things like that but mm-hmm. you know i know this is also very disrespectful and i won't do that so i made sure that you know we follow these uh, things and you know stay true to the text stay stay true to the description uh, of these deities and things that we have and not just take complete freedom and present a completely different picture of it right so that is where we were focused that we or uh, you know just did our research well and see what the text shows and then maybe it's like it's, it's still fantasy mm-hmm. you have to make it cool, mm. but you you can make it cool you know yes. so it's all about presentation yeah so uh, often uh, uh, it comes uh, um, you know uh, about the question of uh whether you go with your creative vision or you go with the uh, you know practical constraints of uh, the game development or uh, the idea yeah. itself so uh did you face some kind of struggle with you know what was your vision initially and how did the yes. game <laughs> eventually uh, came out yeah 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 that, yeah, yeah. that, that is to like it is like completely like not completely but very different like we wanted to do so many things we had like so many different ideas but then we have to be like we had to be like practical also mm. because okay the thing is you're working on a limited budget you're working with a limited team so and you need to deliver on these thing uh, these 
particular milestones that you have because if you don't deliver then everyone suffers it puts the whole team back so then we had a vision we tried to push it as much as we could but then there are things that are completely out out of you know your control you really we wanted to make you know uh that is what we wanted to do make each and every frame a painting but then the amount of assets and everything that would it would require with just like two people mm-hmm. modeling the whole thing the whole environment it was just you know absolutely travesty okay. so then it's like okay la- how can we do things smarter mm-hmm. so then okay we'll do a we'll take a modular approach so what i'll do is like i'll break a window down so top section mid section and the grill patterns i'll make different variations mm. and then with that we can mix and match and create another set of new variations mm-hmm. so that is that's the approach that we took in each and everything so like breaking things down and how we can you know mix and match and create new assets from those assets and fill up the whole world mm-hmm. so that is like now eventually that's how you learn how to you know work smarter right. how to work work you know better it's like okay i can come up with a craziest concept you know that will take a person you know you know it will look, look like the best concept out mm-hmm. there but then the person who has to make it will have to spend like two months or three months just getting those right so now is that feasible in the production mm-hmm. you know pipeline no you can't afford that okay so how can i still make a nice interesting character but maybe simplify things or how one element could be reused multiple times mm. to get get there so these eventually you learn or to make these smart choices and that's actually because no matter how even if you are like a 100 million funded game you, your creative vision you would as a creative you would want to do each and everything that's possible mm. but sometimes that is not so each and every time at every point you are working with constraints right and that is what i say like constraint actually brings out great designs because once you're working with constraints that's when you try to work around things mm. so that's yeah, when you yeah. switch to the smart way of doing things or you come up with new exactly, ideas exactly yeah how to yeah, execute yeah. on them right yeah yeah so that that's and this also made me like very less critical about what other people put mm. up because you never know their struggles or their constraints mm-hmm. you know we see something and we are like okay man this sucks and this is not right maybe i could have done a better job but you really don't know what the team was working with and you know this is the best that they could do with those constraints yes. so it's always important to know what constraint people are working with okay great so uh, as a concept artist like um, uh what different teams or what different kind of uh, uh you know other uh, let's say technical or artistic people are you uh, working with in a production like yeah. who who all are in- connected yeah. to the concept artist or who all are feeding into the concept and how how does yeah. that exactly work so uh, like while uh, it is mostly mostly like a pre production kind of a thing like concept art, but it is actually like equally important during production mm-hmm. bits so what how concept artist works in production is like basically if the like the level, the game designer he basically he mocks up a level and he is facing issues with okay what obstacle should i add mm-hmm. so he'll just give you a screenshot and now it's your job to maybe come up with solution that stays to the universe and it also works from the game design point of view so okay you know we we have this arena mm. but it needs a pole so now you you can't just add like a normal pole if your theme is something else and you just can't add something that help the player do an attack so you will think around it, okay this is world this is the setting that i have mm. maybe you know if this can be like a broken pillar that is shaped that way so this can be used as a pole for the person to do an attack or a wall that you can do an attack from so these you so you assist like the game designer also in solving these problems and uh, then it comes also to uh, the lighting artist maybe they 
the game they've built the light settings and then you can maybe do paint towards on that mm-hmm. you know, okay if we you know try this light setting or if we try this or things would read better so that way also you're constantly trying to improve the visual look of the game so that way you provide them feedback okay it also you also work with the vfx teams okay if they've they're making particles and they're not working so you paint over them and try to make better particles that work with the whole vision or that look better or they read better so that way you always you know assisting those people when you enter production and that is also a big portion of your work it's like assisting so many people mm-hmm. uh with even with animation okay they're not coming they might they might need uh some poses or something to strike inspiration or things like that. so that's where you 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 know work with them and try to come up with solutions and mm-hmm. that's when you so basic co- concept art is also problem solving like you know you're solving so many different problems uh during production right right and um does yeah. it like um, does your concept or your work come back to you from maybe a modeling stage or a post production stage like yeah this yeah. is not working please you know let's yeah yeah it, it it happens all, all the time you know it's like on uh, like now concept artists are also you know using 3d to make a base and just to get the proportion right but sometimes when you sketch it it really doesn't look good uh, in 3d mm-hmm. so what we do is like uh, like it happens everywhere you're constantly working with the uh, the people who are doing the modeling you're constantly guiding them you're painting over their work okay this proportions it needs to be like this you know you're getting this shape wrong this would read better mm-hmm. so you're constantly you know assisting them and sometimes okay you've made a crazy character that has a long cloth or something like that but when you enter it's like the programmers that cloth is breaking the whole character down and there is no solution it's like dropping the fps or things like that so then they completely go back to that stage okay how do we remove this element that is causing the game to break hmm. so this is also like a lot of so there's a lot it's of like, to and fro happening throughout the yes 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 absolutely pipeline. absolutely yes okay. yes yes okay yes. and the, these are production problems and they happen like you just can't get away mm-hmm. with it it's like if it's taking too much space so you know you really you really can't populate the world that you know densely mm-hmm. so how do you do that what do we do to cover things out how do you work around the textures and all that so that way you constantly you know working with all the departments so basically. that is also like an important aspect of uh, working as a concept artist like you don't only have to yeah. be good at especially in, in smaller teams mm-hmm. like in smaller teams like when you just have handful of people so you constantly are helping each other out you know does that bigger like studios or okay, to grow better working in a small yeah team? absolutely Yes, working in strong, you get an idea of what job all the departments are doing, and then with experience, you also now you try to you you are now able to foresee these problems beforehand. So now you face these problems. So in the newer concept or newer work you do, you you are doing, you know, okay, this might lead to this, right. and this might cause issues. So okay, now I'll avoid this, mm-hmm. so that now the next one actually ends up you know saving time. so that's how also you grow as an artist and this is where experience you know comes into a picture right. so even when you are making concept now when you are aware of the whole pipeline of you know where things can go wrong you will obviously you know try to not make those choices mm-hmm. while a person who doesn't have the experience of you know the production pipeline or how things work will make those choices and then you know that it will just extend the work mm. so that's when i i feel experience coming to picture because you know the what problems uh you know other departments can face because of this mm-hmm. so uh, do you think uh, your education played an important role in how you yeah. uh, you know perform at your job or you learned most of yes. it on the job itself yeah no i think uh, like i said like i was extremely lucky that i was part i just got admission that right at the right time 
because still if you see uh, majority of people working in the gaming industry have all graduated from that college mm. have all come out from that college like i think the whole industry was built because of like the newer workforce was built because of that and college that the and that's what time, like it was everything was building yes, up exactly. and everyone yes, put, was yes, putting exactly. their you know best efforts yes yes absolutely and the thing is that one like when i meet these uh, studio founders and owners and the, the thing is that the biggest drawback is like when the college shut down it's like now there is a dart of talent now we have to search talent otherwise it was like you know you could trust that you know the faculty was nice and these people they would know what game design is what the whole process is, and became that there was a constant pool of talent that was being generated so now so that is what you know i actually because like working with the fifth year where you form teams mm. initially you are separate you know art game art is separate you have separate classes you have a separate batch game programming is different game design is different so in the in the fifth year is when you form studios you form like a group of people and then these people you they you might have not even interactive interacted with them you know some might be your friends but this is some first time you actually work with them together so then it's like one of them becomes like a project manager then you have deliverables and the hods you have to present they become like your investors or funders and they constantly take out problems they play test and then there's a final jury that plays the prototype and if the prototype fails you fail the jury so then it is actually like it's giving you the whole you know a preview of what the industry holds basically so that was like a great time you know i personally you know uh, had a blast at college yeah okay so um, yeah. coming to the techniques and tools that uh, mostly are being yeah. used like uh, in in a in the industry uh, especially yeah. in the gaming industry what kind of tools are you guys specifically using or are you like uh, doing that on a project basis like you are experimenting with yes. some new software or you have a fixed set of tools that you are going to use mm -hmm. yeah so i think with gaming it's like things move so fast and there is like one software that does the job better than the previous one it's like you're constantly learning and constantly you know switching from one software right. to other and it's like there's a saying in the gaming the day you stop learning in the industry is the day you die so it's like rapidly it evolves so fast because you know uh, but the core software is i think for making like we personally like mostly what people use is like uh, uh, unreal engine or unity to mostly unreal engine now there's to make the game that's the engine for artists they use softwares like blender or 3ds max or maya that's the standard right now you know okay. and then for texturing it's like substance and uh, a lot of the substance designers mm -hmm. cd code that's what the pipeline then there are other software like houdini mm -hmm. and other things that people also you know uh, try to constantly add in their workflow and try to get a better results okay. and that does happen you know a lot of e software has its own positives and negatives and strengths right. so uh, you personally like for for your concepts do you uh, entirely do it in uh, like photoshop or you also mix it with some 3d pipeline because i yeah see yeah i do i have some 3d assets most of the time yeah 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 i i do like i basically i mostly use 3d code okay. uh, blender okay. mostly these and then photoshop so okay. yeah 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 okay That's it's it's like really now i think it's like very important uh, to know especially blender mm -hmm. if you're working as a concept artist because you can do things so much better faster mm -hmm. uh when when you uh, know these softwares so okay yeah. so you come up with a with a initial sketch and then you use maybe 3d assets yeah. and uh, you basically work on the composition yeah. mainly yeah yeah just to you know and even it's like uh when now if i have a sketch so i just you know quickly block that out in 3d just to see how this thing looks from different angles or maybe i'll just at times uh, i would just you know start 
making something in 3D and then take a screenshot and sketch over that. So it's like a back and forth process that I follow just to make like final images. Initially, it was like, you know, you do line art mm -hmm. and then you, you know, do flat layers and then you blend. But that was like a tedious process mm -hmm. concept but you have to be fast. So now it's like, okay, you have like a super dirty thumbnail and then you instantly move to 3D. You start creating these assets, mm -hmm. uh, quickly modeling them, taking a render screenshot mm -hmm. and then you bring that to Photoshop and then you start your paint over and the refining process. So I think that's the best, best possible way of doing concept art uh, now. Okay. Recently. So for, for someone who is just, uh, you know, looking to start their education and to become a concept artist, what yeah. would you suggest? Like they should yeah. work more on the uh, drawing, the traditional drawing or digital drawing, or they yeah. should yeah. also focus on learning the 3D software. Does it have to be simultaneous I think, uh, or it should build upon, you know, one another? So, yeah. So the thing is, uh, this is like a personal observation. Uh, and that is uh, what I've seen people's work, like majority of them, because these softwares are so good mm -hmm. and you automatically, everything is taken care of. You know, you get these crazy textures, light setups and they're the render, you know, in that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah they're very, so what? A lot of people do is like they start getting good in blender and 3d and they skip the hard process of painting and figuring out how things work mm -hmm. so now the thing is like now they end up either you become so good that you're creating everything in 3d mm -hmm. like you are taking out like the final picture in 3d and you're just tweaking things mm -hmm. in photoshop and that's it mm -hmm. that's your workflow if you can do that great mm -hmm practice that okay. but if you plan to paint over then you need to be really good at painting because what i see is like they take a render but then they don't know how to paint because then that stroke that they did or their painting it actually ends up spoiling the image and it knows you can see that okay you know when they try to take that mm. cginess away mm. from that 3D, they can you you you're able to figure out okay you know this is where they went wrong when they start painting on top of you know the 3d base or that 3d so that is when you know painting comes into play or that doing things from so it's like what i also do and i what i would recommend everyone it's like you know one hour if you're doing this practice mm -hmm. painting and one hour maybe just practice 3d so then you can you know mix both and create things faster or it's just that you're just growing yourself developing yourself as an artist you know yeah okay so um how do you like uh, work around representing uh, some sort of diversity in your characters like you uh, often a concept artist is uh, supposed to work on different kind of characters for different projects so how do you because uh, yeah. with with practice and with time uh, you start producing similar kind of uh, artworks yeah. or similar kind of characters. Everyone goes through yeah. that phase. How do you break that yeah. and become more versatile? Yeah. So I think that be you become uh, more versatile when you start dwelling into different kinds of cultures and uh, that is what you call world building. Mm. So that is another set that you need to possess is like be becoming a good world builder. And world building automatically happens when you start researching about history, how tribes were formed, how, what kind of tools, you know, they were making, how, what is the story behind the costumes that they wear, mm. how, why, how, and why did they made those costumes? So once you start understanding that, that's when your sense of design also, you know, improves, especially in when you, when you're making character, if you're working with realistic characters, in video games, that is mostly you're designing the costume. So now you need to know how people in real life, you know, made those costumes. And when it comes to uh, not making similar stuff, it's it comes back to studying different artists. Okay, now it's like I am also practicing. I haven't left practice. Okay, now I'll, you know, 
go through different masters i'll try to break the work down okay how does line decker you know do his work or why, what are the choices that he made and why he made those choices or why the sergeant paint that way or what why does he want you know understanding those and breaking their work down will help you coming up with different art styles and then your work will feel you know different because you then know what the project needs and then you work around it so if i am making something you know that is for uh, uh, maybe uh, teenage girls mm -hmm. then i would you know search for artist or things that are uh, catering to that that color palette so maybe i'll try to see artist okay loish works right, she right. works great mm -hmm. and there is a okay so then that becomes an inspiration that becomes okay maybe i can try to borrow the things okay that's how she paints the nose or she sh simplifies shapes and how she makes things vibrant mm -hmm. so that's how you know you you it's all about research and also it's like never search the topic directly if you are making like a, a forest don't search forest mm. M maybe go deeper maybe go search sculptures of trees so now you see like whole different visual library opens where people have their uh, put in their imagination to make these beautiful sculptures in a different way so now okay now i see these shapes now i can use these shapes in creating a forest or magical forest or thing like that so that's how you keep on increasing you know uh, improving your mm. your designs and your artwork because you're not uh, there's this uh, artist uh, saiful hawk and uh, i am a big fan of uh, his work and i took his uh, class it was uh, originality in of design okay. so and that the first thing that he said was if you uh uh it was uh, basically if you see how basically how you see things if you see things differently the things that you see change right right now so yeah yeah so that completely you know changed my perception okay i just need to look at things differently if i look at things differently things that i see will change mm -hmm. and that happens and it also works with your references what you see you know just there are tiny if you have an image and if you go to photoshop and if you just go to posterize or just turn it into like two value you'll see certain shapes mm. and you know that might just do the trick so yeah right you also created a indian transformer series i remember, oh yeah. Right? yeah and were those as <laughs> yeah. nfts also no, yeah, I did. Uh, you know, uh, I made those into NFTs, but people wanted to buy them for peanuts, mm -hmm. and I was like, nah, nah, nah I, I'm not selling it for do that things, cheap. Uh, so do this, you uh, think uh, NFTs are coming back anytime soon? Like, we don't hear about. Like that. that's what that, that's the thing, you know. Uh, like when I said art is being exploited, uh, you know, throughout ages. Like NFT was such a good thing for artists, you know, where you could be original. But then everyone started to rip it. Mm. Like it was all filled with meaningless apes and you know, uh, monkeys and things like that. That just took over all this generative shit. That just took the whole, you know, NFT world and. He just crashed it otherwise it was like people were creating meaningful artwork yes. or artwork that was unique you know one of one mm -hmm. and then people could own it so that was just going back to times of actually you know owning paintings and mm -hmm. stuff so that stuff was really good you know but then it's just like what that's what i said like everyone wants to exploit art mm -hmm. so they just i feel took, most of the over. like new trends are you know just another distraction for at least yeah, artists yeah, yeah. who are on their learning path, right? They, they yes, feel that yes. they are missing out on something. Okay, let's try this. Then that thing. Is yeah, yeah, no, yeah. And then they feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. okay, well, maybe they they feel like they're lost again, and it's very tough to yeah, get exactly. back onto the path. And the thing is that okay, like even with AI or NFT, this is a skill that if this becomes the new norm or this is a skill that you need 
to you know survive or get a job or you know earn a living this can be learned by a person who's making art yes and he would eventually do a better job because Absolutely. he has understanding and he has a, another skill set that he can add to this mm-hmm. so the so it's like don't leave the foundation or core behind and just jump to the trend mm. you know you have to be because when the when the trend is over you are also mm. over but if you have gone that hard way if you have built that foundation that whole art is built on then you can survive these trends because you will know how to adapt because each and everything still goes back to the foundation because that's how you learn how to make things look good that's how you develop a sense of aesthetics i, so I feel it, these, it's easier to navigate through these trends if your foundations are strong yes. yes exactly exactly that's what right so it's like if you're just actually jumping into trends then you know as soon as that is over you also are pretty much over right, right. and that has happened to people who just wanted to just started to make nfts and now they are you know they they're gone suddenly yeah, yeah they're gone suddenly yeah okay i hope you're not stretching this too long no no i'm i'm pretty much free but yeah okay great yeah. so just a few more yeah. questions uh, that i yeah. have in my mind um i i believe you are also into music oh yeah 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 you are like into, the, uh, what what kind of music yeah heavy metal <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah 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 so the thing is like that not now oh, no. i've lived that but yeah i used to have a band and all my friends they are musicians okay. so you know they have like uh, uh, they do, do music commercially as well so now i was really attracted to this form of music i think it also anything that has passion mm-hmm. attracts me and i think heavy metal and metal in general is like one of the most passionate forms of music and has the most passionate fans fan following basically it's so more intense. that whole thing Yeah yeah it in it is it on, uh, it's I guess, just uh, I mean it's it's I'm not uh, really familiar that much but yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. as much as I uh, feel I think it's more intense on yeah. emotions and uh, the aggression Yes yes and so it's like who, who for understand the language they would love it Yes yes exactly exactly and then it's just like uh, also like playing an instrument that is art in itself really you know really mastery really of insane, yeah. instrument it's just like it like you you when you see a person just nailing things down on his guitar it's like magical to see and then people getting up on stage and you know playing their instruments live like what better form of skill or display of skill mm. that can be instead of just you know playing recorded music mm. on stage That's entirely so, different vibe. altogether yeah. yeah 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 thing yeah yeah so so it, it has always you know inspired me and even in the person like the stories uh, that i want to you know tell as an artist or my original ips that i plan to you know come out with have a uh, you know a big uh, take m- m- this form of music mm. as a core influence so it's always you know influence about the things that i have seen or the people that have made the stories that i have you know heard so it's like they have also you know inspired me a lot so yeah right so- and that it is it was also the time where i actually learned photoshop mm. so because uh, you know when you form a band and uh, you know there is no scene because uh, now you are working with your pocket money so now you want to make posters so that you can invite people to your shows so then you okay figure out pho- photoshop out mm. and now you start learning to make logos okay i am good at it mm-hmm. okay maybe i can make some side income i'll do you know logos for different bands so that's where i actually started uh, in the industry was you know making logos for bands and then become doing artwork so that's how i started learning digital painting and you know how to do these things so that actually you know worked in my favor so when i was uh, learning 
art basically from view to concept art this thing was actually something that you know gave me some income so i didn't have to like completely rely on my parents so i was you know i could take care of my own bills and also learn on the side so that way it was uh, pretty cool <laughs> so all kind of cr- and, creative pursuits yeah. actually contribute to an artist's journey Right. Yeah, it's music, like mu- you think music contributes to your uh, visual art somehow, directly, indirectly. Somehow, it, uh, yeah, it. I think somewhere it does because even when I'm making something, I know sometimes the music just influences me. Mm-hmm. That sometimes mm-hmm. there are there are moments where I want to create artwork just so I can use that artwork on this music piece that I just mm-hmm. heard. so that also is a big motivation for me i just want to make a universe where this kind of music can be used as a backdrop so yeah so personally for me it does uh, yeah okay great and uh, yeah as you mentioned you uh, are still uh, you know taking some online mentorships and uh, uh, you yeah. uh, um, like to move further on your learning path do you think online yeah. learning or online courses work as good as you know the offline mode of teaching so there are benefits of both i guess uh, so now online mentorships is the most easiest best accessible way to learn art like you don't have any excuse you know to you know they are easily available mm-hmm. you can afford those you some might be little costly but they absolutely worth it so you know there's no excuse to learning it's just now your discipline that you have to show up to these classes you have to do the assignments and make the proper best use of it interact with other people now it's on you mm-hmm. but the thing is like when you do it offline it just it just have a it has a different feeling because now you're meeting people also and sometimes if talking solely from a person like a who wants to create their own universes or is also like wants to write stories when you go offline when you meet people when you talk to people their stories the relationship that you share with those people they actually help you in creating characters that you can use in your own world that's how stories are made you know okay now i go to uh, you know uh, this i have this class now each and every one is you know trying to uh, be the best they can mm-hmm. so now i can put, make those each and every student into a character right how they're trying to you know you know outdo the other person and what personality is that mm-hmm. okay there is this uh, guy in my class and he just comes and he always has a red bull in his hands and he's constantly you know working and you know he is constantly eating cup noodles and all that so now i all this is like vi- visual uh, stimulus for me mm-hmm. to you know create a new character that is inspired by this person mm-hmm. so that way it actually helps the more you see the more you'll be able to create so when on in online classes it's like all learning it's like you know taking information you mm. but when you want to create stuff that is on your own you need to have these certain experiences and that for that solely for that reason i recommend people to f- go to a college or you know or to find a school or where you can be you can meet people you can you know see life and that way you can you know put those experiences in your work i think the uh, common factor between both the modes is the discipline and the routine that you yes. need yes yes yes, yes. So, uh, so would you like to share some thoughts on discipline or routine for artists like what what do you follow yeah Th- this is something that i personally like struggle with and i am constantly you know after me okay no okay and okay it happens but you have to be like completely disciplined when it comes to art it's like not you know luck or uh, other things is just like showing up and being disciplined and practicing each and every day and it's that easy 
if you just you know do this continuously mm-hmm. you will improve you will you know reach to that level where you only thing that is stopping you from being that is the amount of practice that you do right and the thing is uh, during my college uh, i mache uh, uh, so i was listening to his podcast and he just said that those uh, you know those 8 hours that you spent in your college or office they don't matter the 8 hours that you get after your college or the office are the most important hours and what you do in those is actually going to help you so this is something that i took very seriously so it's like you know if i'm if i have a job 8 hours of that then i need to take out some time to practice i need to take at least an hour out daily to practice mm-hmm. if during in my college i made sure that okay even if my assignments are done i'm not wasting time i'm not you know going out or just chilling or playing video games i this is a time when i need to practice so i will use those hours widely and you know practice hmm. great so that thing this just completely you know changed my perception and this is something that I still try to remind myself that you know those eight hours don't matter it's like the eight hours that you get after hmm. you know your job or your college they are the most crucial ones how you work on yourself and how do you actually yes, exactly. practice that yes yes you know yes, yes. develops the entire skill set exactly exactly so that's why i make sure to take this mentorship at least like one mentorship uh, in a year and it becomes very difficult very hard for me to you know work when when you also working like mm-hmm. a job and then doing these assignments but then it keeps me in routine it keeps mm-hmm. me in check it and it helps me you know just to become like a better artist uh, so yeah these are these been really 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 helpful great man even i try i in fact i love to you know keep on learning new things and yeah, yeah, i try is... to push myself uh, to uh, start something new altogether and you know maybe challenge myself yeah. with some tools or some styles of uh, drawing and painting or some illustrations yeah. and it is always fun yeah. you get to uh, you know some uh, low points also once in a while but yeah. eventually yeah. if you look at it from uh, a broader perspective you get to uh, improve a lot and you see some kind of growth over exactly. time exactly 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 that's yeah. what yeah okay and that i think that, that is what like once you pick up something i think the hormones or that are secreted in the brain are basically the ones that you feel during boredom mm. so then you automatically try to you know just switch that off because you're struggling so those hormones are secreted but once you get a hang of it that's when you actually start enjoying mm. it and it only happens when you you know fight that feeling of you know just you know stopping or giving up but once you stop that and i think it's like then you start enjoying these things i think more. it's uh, like being an artist is is a constant mix of uh, you know struggle and satisfaction and excitement yeah. and uh, constant demotivation uh, demotivation <laughs> as well yeah, yeah. i think yeah, 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 we should yeah. like accept that and keep it as yeah. a very natural ingredient of of our mm-hmm. being and stay on yeah. our path to keep on learning yeah i think that's why it's something new a race it's a marathon so yeah, yeah you just need to just keep going because uh, nowadays like uh, all the uh, young artists and aspiring artists they they tend to uh, you know look at things uh, in a very anxious way they they feel like okay uh, if they are not able to develop a skill set in like 2 3 years they are not going to land up in yeah. a good job and then everything yeah. is you know uh, useless but they don't understand yeah. the importance of uh, you know giving in that time and uh, giving in that discipline which which will lead you yeah. to a better position over maybe a decade or maybe a few more years and if you are really passionate yeah. i think uh, there is no point of giving up at any stage if you really yeah, that's feel what... uh, good about it if mm-hmm. you really uh, you know want to achieve something it's it's a never ending journey yes exactly and it's like 
people should yet yeah, it is a journey and sometimes you need to take little risk mm-hmm. and it's okay to take risk when you can and the thing is like it's also making use of the situation that you have like for example uh since you mentioned the transformers mm-hmm. so once when i graduated from college i just didn't want to join a a studio and work like sit in an office mm-hmm. i really didn't want to you know because majority of those were mobile gaming and that time i didn't want to work on mobile games i was like a practicing for uh, stuff that i the games that i want to play and games that i want to work and i knew okay i am not there yet for any studio to hire me so i was like okay i'll just you know freelance whatever i can and i won't join like a studio okay i had this loan on me as well like the education loan and things like that and the freelance projects that time they weren't working like i would end up because that time you are you know uh, very young in the industry and you don't have that experience like i had you know so many troubles like working freelance for people and they would just you know just run away with the money and you know not pay me back or the project would just suddenly get you know shit mm. so but that was the time when i was like okay let, let, let me just make art for myself that acted like escapism also if you can say it mm. and that's when transformers was born you know then i had this i had this it was just a very random idea and i i think not random idea it's like anyone can get this idea like mm. we and everyone might have imagined you know sitting in the car like what if this car in front of me or this auto transformed and i always had these visions i was like okay let me just you know draw these mm. and i be, i wanted to actually you know uh, make these like model these in 3d and make like miniature cho- toys so i was actually also researching how mm-hmm. they can be you know uh, what is the core of uh, these uh, transforming and what mm-hmm. part goes where so i was also thinking on those lines that was like a different skill that i i really couldn't master that could time so that but i try 3d printing now yeah yeah exactly i can yeah yeah maybe so uh, so now the thing was they i started these sketches and these actually went viral mm. like with scoop poop and hindustan times covering it mm. and this actually resulted in me getting more jobs so those months when i was without work or mm. i was you know not earning this resulted in like getting me projects that would pay like four to five times more than what i would you know regularly earn so it's like very important for artists like okay maybe there is a spell of you know where you're not getting some work but it's like you need to also utilize that time to create your own individual work that is going to help you in the future or you know work on this actually is the time that you should also be enjoying mm. that okay now it's the time where i can work on myself right. i can improve my skill mm-hmm. skills and also you know, create stuff that i want to mm. you know maybe others are creating but if you want to create it why not create it so this actually is you know you shouldn't be uh, very uh, get scared mm. of this time in fact enjoy this time you know because you actually you're a creator you're creating stuff so utilize that to create your own projects see wonderful so what are your future yeah. aspirations like uh, where do you see the indian industry going in like Uh, let's say 5 years or a decade and any sort of uh, uh, projects or you know areas that you would like to explore as a concept artist yeah so like right now uh, like mostly it's with uh, nodding head games like we are working on some great stuff and i can't wait for uh, you know when if the world will get to see what we guys are working on and personally it's like a uh, i have so many different you know ideas and like stories that i want to you know uh come up with and you know show so i think it like the future years it's going to be just working on my ips and my stories that i want to tell the world so it's just basically and like it's that what i say like all this practice in each and everything that i do is basically to do justice for the stories that i have in mind so when i am actually making those i am making the best possible art that i can make 
so like all these things is just to uh, you know do justice to those stories and also improve that so that is it's just like i think in india we really need original ips like we have been constantly working on ips that are creating or already have some sort of value attached to it but we are not creating new original ideas or ips mm-hmm. so i think for us creators now i think in the recent years since tutorials and online education has become more uh, relevant and easy to access mm-hmm. artists in the country have leveled up tremendously like it's like leaps and bounds if you see from past years to now everyone is so so damn good and it's like we are now at a level so i think it's like it's now your responsibility to also you know create for your country and create ips that will also you know do business generate stuff and that's how studios big studios are formed man it's like you start with something small it works out and then you just turn into a big big you know big studio so it's like now it's time to you know create new stuff Absolutely. create new ideas yeah yeah, yeah. okay so uh, you would uh, certainly look forward to you know uh, having more projects having more games yeah. made by <laughs> your team and uh, yeah. hopefully we'll uh, get back uh, you know again on this kind of a podcast maybe sometime well, in the future absolutely so it was such so, a wonderful conversation yes it was indeed really insightful and i hope this helps uh, our audience and the listeners and uh, yeah. hope to see you again soon thank you so yeah, much anirudh it was thank great you so much thank you great yeah have a good night